Incoming transmission. The heavens have become a part of man's world. Incoming transmission. Incoming transmission. Devin's mission log. What's going on, people? And welcome back to another episode of uh, the Mission Log. I want to say, before we even get into it, that I know the last few uh, episodes of my Mission Log have been, like, really scripted and kind of, like, um, topic-based, I guess. And this one is not going to be that. Okay, this one is not planned. There's no script. I have an idea of what I want to talk about, but I don't know how to to really do it so just giving you guys that warning off the bat now getting into the meat of potatoes of everything uh there's something that i've been tiptoeing around with you guys for a little while now and it was something that i felt like i needed to address at least before it got thrown into the public light somehow and considering that you goons are our fans and you guys continue to support us it's something that i felt like i should be open and honest with you guys about so to cut right down to the chase i'm a divorcee in the plainest terms i got married and got divorced a little over almost two years ago now and it's something that we've been tiptoeing around the show for a little while because You know, I'm still young and I didn't want it to affect the show or how people saw me or how people took us, you know, how serious they took the show. I don't know. There's a lot of different reasons for it, but I just didn't feel like talking about it on the show or mentioning it on the show. And I kind of wanted to change that. Um, I'm sitting here with some black coffee right now, you know, nice vibe, listening to some lo-fi on my headphones. (sighs) Get some coffee and join me, people. We can have a discussion about this. So, to give you guys some perspective here. um, I married the girl that I had been dating in high school. For those of you that went to high school with me, you probably have an idea who I'm talking about. But for the time being and for the indefinite future, she's probably going to remain nameless I don't wish to bring her into the spotlight, nor do I wish to give her any kind of attention. We started dating in my senior year of high school, or right the summer of my senior year in high school. And although there were signs from the offset that it wasn't the healthiest relationship, I completely ignored them because for whatever reason, I just kind of fell head over heels for this girl. I think a big part of it looking back was just the fact that She seemed like somebody I could save, in a sense. Somebody who I felt needed me and wanted me to be there for them. And that was kind of the motivating factor for me staying as long as I did. Because I always got the impression that she was alone in the world and she didn't have anybody else. And so I wanted to be that person that would stand by her side. I wanted our relationship to last and then... We could look back and say that we fought to be where we were. On top of that, when I had met her, I was very physically attracted to her. And um, she fell into my type. You know, the kind of girl that I had always wanted to be with. Um, We took each other's virginities and it was kind of like a whole high school sweetheart type of ordeal. So moving past high school... We just continued on our relationship, and I continued to work my various jobs. And eventually, we had an opportunity to get a house together, and we had enough money saved that we felt like it was reasonable for us to do it. Unfortunately, she had fell into a new belief system that told her moving in with somebody without being married to them would be considered wrong. And this was right around the time that I was starting to fall back into my traditionalist values. And I 
pretty much agreed with her, even though we came from two different schools of belief. I was like, yes, this is a good idea. I think we should, you know, get married before we were to move in together. That way it makes it more official, more sacred, whatever. I don't really know why I agreed to it to begin with, but I did. And honestly, I did think at the time that I loved this girl, I thought that I would be with her for the rest of my life. And I thought we would have a future together because again, we had a rocky relationship for the longest time, but we always somehow managed to work past it. At least that's what I told myself in the moment. Looking back, I feel like a lot of it was just work that I had put into the relationship that wasn't reciprocated. And that's eventually what ended up being our downfall. So we talked about getting married. We both agreed that we were willing to, we were ready to, and that we wanted to. And um, a couple months later, I ended up proposing. And a couple months after that, we ended up having a a wedding. Uh, We had it at a family member's house because this was peak COVID season and we weren't allowed to go to the court and we weren't allowed to rent out any public spaces. So we had probably the smallest, cheapest wedding that you could think of. But we both agreed that it would just be like a temporary wedding that once we were once we got more established we would redo the ceremony and renew our vowels and we would um make it more special so we had the small cheapy wedding we invited all of our immediate family and uh we just kept it we kept it small we moved into the house the very next day well that's a lie as we were preparing for the wedding She was doing most of the wedding planning, and I was preparing the house because we had uh, found a house that we were going to live at, and I got all the furniture, and um, I moved everything over there, and I started preparing the house. I started cleaning it up and moving everything in there so that after the ceremony, we could move in there. And so the night of the ceremony, we ended up staying up extremely late with all of our family, and then... um, Once everybody started to leave, we bounced out and we went back to the house. We didn't have enough money saved to go on a honeymoon, but we decided to take the next week off of work just to spend time together and enjoy being, you know, alone in the world and being out um, with each other. So we did that. We came back right afterwards. Uh, We spent the night together, if you get what I'm saying, and then... You know, we ended up living together at that house for upwards of 11 months. Uh, The owners of the house saw an opportunity to sell it. And so they ran the idea by us and we agreed that they should. And we ended up having to move out and move back into her parents' house for the time being while we managed our finances and got ready to rent out another house or buy another house or what have you. It was during that time while we were living at her parents' house that... All of the previous issues of our relationship really came to a head. I don't know what caused it specifically, but a lot of underlying issues with us and our relationship and the way we treated each other really started to surface and manifest. And shortly after moving back in with her parents, we started to drift apart in a sense. We started to lose touch with one another um we weren't intimate anymore we really couldn't be because of our situation we weren't communicating as much we weren't spending as much time together and the only thing that was on my mind at the time was my previous podcast that I had been hosting and working I had just got a new position as a caregiver with a patient that I really liked and so it was just working making podcasts and listening to podcasts and that's the only thing that was on my mind you know my my wife wasn't on my mind because uh we had just drifted to that point there was some personal things that happened personal circumstances that happened with my wife and uh it ended up being that she had a lot more free time on her hands and it was around that time that she started to go out into the world um A couple weeks after that, 
She confessed to me that she didn't love me and that she regretted ever marrying me. And that same day, I ended up packing up all my stuff and just leaving. Um, That was all it really took because I had been fighting for us and our relationship for so long that as soon as I found out all of it was in, in vain, all the effort that I had put into us wasn't worth it. That was my signal to leave. Coffee break. And so um, right after that, I packed up all my stuff. I called my brother to come pick me up. And then I left. Funny side story uh, I should mention. You got to keep in mind, uh, we were on really heated terms. We were fighting the day that we broke up. And uh, she screamed into my face. She didn't love me. She didn't want to be with me. She regretted marrying me, right? I'm not crying, but I'm heartbroken. I'm emotional. I call my brother. I tell him, come pick me up right now. Um, I need to get out of here. And I think he got what I was trying to say. And he was like, okay, I'll be there soon. This motherfucker forgot that we had moved into her parents' house, right? So as we're sitting there debating over our relationship and I'm thinking my brother's on the way, he calls me and he says, I'm outside. And I'm like, okay, cool. I walk outside and I'm all, where are you at? And he goes, I'm right here. What are you talking about? And I'm looking around because I'm thinking maybe he drove down the street to like flip a bitch or, you know, and I'm like, I don't see you. Where are you at? And then he goes, bro, I'm sitting in the park, the, the driveway. And I was like, the driveway, the gate's closed. And he goes, what are you talking about? And I'm all, where are you? And then he goes, I'm at the house, the house that you guys live at. And I was like, dumbass, we moved. They sold the house, remember? And then he goes, oh, shit. And then I was like, oh, my fucking God. And he goes, all right, send me your location. I'll be at the new house. And I was like, okay. And I sent it to him. So I had stormed out in the middle of this heated argument thinking that this is the last time I was ever going to see this girl. My brother was on the way, blah, 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 blah. I had to walk back in not two minutes later, look at her dead in the face and say, my brother went to the wrong house. And we sat there in silence for about 30 seconds. She still has tears in her eyes. And then we just start busting out laughing. And we're like, God, he's a fucking idiot. And so for the next 15 minutes, we go on talking about our relationship. But at that point, my mind was already, my mind was already made up. I, again, I had been fighting for us and <clears throat> our relationship and everything that we built for so long. And it always felt one-sided, you know? At some point, she did start to change and grow up and mature, and she became a different person, in a sense. The girl that I had fell in love with in high school wasn't her anymore. She had changed through, you know, all the work that I put into her and all the work that I put into us, and it made her a different person. And then that person just woke up one day and realized that she didn't want to be with me or didn't want to be with somebody like me. So once my brother eventually did find the house, I said goodbye. I walked into the, I, I walked out, got into the car. I updated my brother and we drove home. And then I ended up staying with my family. A couple days later, I went to go get all my stuff. And I think she was under the assumption that we were just going to take a break or something. And I was going to be living at my parents' house. So when I went back to collect all my belongings... I could tell she was a little shocked, but she still had this air about her that she she didn't think it was serious, right? Once I got all my belongings, basically just my clothes, my books, my video game consoles, everything that I had left at the house, um, I basically cut off all ties with her. And shortly after that, my mom helped me find a divorce lawyer. Well, not divorce. What the hell are they called? Um... I'm not looking it up, but she helped me find a, a lawyer to assist in the divorce. And a year and five months after we vowed to be together forever, uh, we were officially divorced. So there's the short version of the story. And now that it's out in the air, 
moving forward on the show, I think we're just going to be more honest about it when addressing the situation. Pretty much all of my friends and family know. I mean, my family knows, obviously, and pretty much all my friends know at this point. Uh, a lot of them didn't even realize because I had lost contact with most of them during this relationship. But now everyone in my personal life knows about the situation. And now you guys do too. So we won't have to dance around it anymore. Whenever I'm referring to my big ex or, um, you know, my high school ex or whatever, that was my ex-wife. My big ex is my ex-wife. So moving forward, now I can make all my ex-wife jokes that I've been holding back. And uh, (laughs) now they'll hit a little bit different too. And I kind of want to take this opportunity to say sorry to everyone in my life who was affected by this. You know, I made a lot of dumb decisions in that relationship to satisfy myself and to satisfy her. And it only ended up costing me in the end. So I definitely learned my lesson. But again, I apologize to each and every one of you that I hurt with my choices. I know I made mistakes and I've been doing everything I can to rectify those mistakes since. There's a couple of you that I talked to personally recently that um, I'm hoping to get a one-on-one with soon so that we can kind of go into this a little bit more. But I want to thank all of you who have given me the chance to re-enter your guys' lives even in the smallest of ways because it feels like at that point I didn't lose everything that I thought I had. The connections might not be the same. My life might be overall different, but just knowing that I was able to talk to you guys one-on-one as equals again impacted me more than I could ever tell any of you. Not that I wouldn't, it's just I haven't had an opportunity to, but I do truly appreciate it. And I appreciate anyone listening to this who made it this far. If you're currently going through a situation where you feel like you're not valued and appreciated in your relationship, I think it might be time for you to just analyze the situation and analyze what you've lost for this person. Analyze what you've done for them and what they'd be willing to do for you. Then again, your life is your life and you're free to make your own mistakes and learn from those mistakes. I had a thousand and one people telling me I shouldn't be with that person and I stayed with her anyways. I lost a lot because of it and I learned because of it. Some of you might just need to go through the exact same thing. I pray you don't. I pray you can find happiness elsewhere. I pray you can find happiness within yourself, your hobbies, your dreams. But I just want you to know that me and Eddie and this show will always be here for you guys. You know, even if I'll never get a chance to talk to any of you personally, you can always tune in to us and hopefully it'll bring a smile to your face and it'll help you relax a little bit in any situation you're in. Because that's the goal of this show. We want to help, we want to entertain, and we want to be a distraction from the world. We want to be a place where you guys feel like you're accepted and you're heard and you're valued. You know, your opinion, your stories, everything. So thank you, all of you who listen to this, who aren't listening to this, and um, thank you to everyone who ever gave us a shot. We appreciate you, and I appreciate you. I didn't know what was going to happen after my divorce but I knew I wouldn't let it be the end of me. And so using this show and my love for writing and my passions, I'm glad I was able to pull myself out of that dark hole that I had fallen into. And any of you that are in that hole, you can do it too. Me and Eddie will be rooting for you guys. Until next time, people. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing for my next mission log. I have some ideas, but... You'll just have to stay tuned. Anyways, until then, I love all of you. I hope all of you have great, peaceful days. Um, and I hope you get laid. Okay? I know people aren't throwing that out as much. I hope you people get laid. And I hope you make some memories. Bye now. Take care. This concludes the transmission.
August 29th, 2021. I feel more alone than I have ever felt in my entire life. I feel as though everything that confessed during that argument back in March is more than she's willing to admit. She completely disregards me and goes out of her way to ignore me on a daily basis. She excuses it as being tired and antisocial, but it feels like more than that. It has gotten to a point where, over the course of several days, we will say less than a hundred words to each other. And that's including calls and texts. Anytime we do happen to talk, it's either extremely brief or I end up saying something to make her shut down and stop talking to me. We are also spending less time together than ever before, which is saying something since we're living under the same roof and we share a bedroom. But the lack of interactions as a whole isn't from a lack of trying. On an almost daily basis, I try talking to her about all these issues. But it just upsets her, and she ignores me saying, I just want alone time. Even though she just and all she's done since is watch videos on her phone. She's been calling me annoying a lot more and snapping at me for little things. She's also been trying to check my phone more, as if she suspects me of cheating on her or something. She does this while also freaking out anytime I grab her phone. I'm not allowed to touch it or go through it anymore. There's even been a few times where she's hidden in the bathroom with the door locked while she deletes things from it. I don't know what she's doing, and I don't want to assume the worst either. But still, I question to myself. I wonder if I caught her cheating, if I would even care. At this point, it feels like she pushed me out of her life. She told me a couple months ago that she regrets marrying me. I just wish I knew how to fix everything. I know that there is something to be gained from this. I hope that God shows me the way, because at this point, I don't feel like we're married anymore. It feels like has left me behind. But then again, maybe it happened a long time ago, and I'm only just now seeing it.